How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is Finding the References, a special branded series for finding all references, easter eggs, and secrets in the Henry Stickman series. We are on episode 4, Fleeing the Complex. I do have something very important to me that I want to talk to you guys about, but I'll save that for later in the video. I promise it's more interesting than a sponsored segment. I'll quickly talk about the trailer released for the game, which is super uncommon for a Flash game. I'll keep it brief because I talk more about that in my History of Henry Stickman Flashlight video, and a little bit again in my video on canon endings of the series. I've been doing a lot of Henry stuff lately. The joke of Henry being extremely lucky and difficult to contain carries forward from that Flash-only preloader in infiltrating the airship. The idea of redacting any specific information is super clever and makes it so every previous ending and rank is a legitimate potential arc of how we arrived at this point. This is further exemplified by their discussion of conflicting reports. What do you mean by incident? There are conflicting reports. I guess whatever makes the most sense depending on the decisions he makes. That is followed up with a mention of the infamous teddy bear. And there is something about the teddy bear. Which interestingly came in the fake out ending in the previous episode, not even one of the proper endings. Something that was unfortunately never explored further in fleeing the complex or completing the mission. There are no differences or major changes in the actual intro. We have simply been captured and find ourselves detained at the wall with Ellie, a brand new character. In the background, we have a long list of things you are to not do while lying here. Which in its own way kind of reminds me of things to not do at a stoplight in Spongebob. Simply zooming in wasn't a high enough resolution, I kind of had to root around in the game files. Do not smoke, plan schemes, touch, around, touch harass supervisors, be stubborn, burp, try a harebrained ploy slash con, do magic tricks or attempt magic tricks, employ an escape plan that ends in a cartoonish or silly fashion, fight, swear, chew gum of any kind, seriously, no gum, bring your own food, uh, no one told me, singing, touching a second time, no touching, or whistling catchy tunes. As per usual, I'll only be covering different branches and fails if there's a reference within. So for example, Play Dead is funny but it has no references, we'll skip it. Instead, we'll start with Boost Up. And for the early part of the video here, we'll first help Ellie up along with us and put off being a total jerk to her. But you know, that's eventually coming. There are two guards in the middle of a conversation, with one guy bragging about buffing his guy's damage. And I'm like, look at how much I can. I don't care. I ended up buffing up my guys and doing like 70 damage. <laughs> That's funny. He is Heath Stone, who loves talking about his favorite mobile card game, which would be Hearthstone. His conversation buddy is Isaac Binderson, who loves collecting random trinkets, with his name and bio referring to the Binding of Isaac. We encounter these guys a few times throughout the complex during our various branching paths and hear different snippets of their conversation throughout. Once we've heard all the possible snippets of that conversation throughout the complex, I'll string the whole thing together so you can hear the uninterrupted conversation later on in the video. Isaac's staff is most commonly cited as a Jaffa Warrior Matok staff from Stargate SG-1, but Puff has said he didn't base it on anything in particular. In the background, we have several square bricks stacked like an L Tetris block. While distraction has taken on a life of its own and unexpectedly became one of the biggest memes of 2020, at the time, it was simply an unexpected payoff to what should have been a straightforward solution to getting past two guards. Dancing was never what anyone would have assumed when you pick distraction. Now that Henry Stickman has received second life with the collection, I don't think I've ever seen another Flash game transcend in this way. I'm seeing Henry Stickman and distraction memes everywhere. What a thing of beauty. Sorry, what was this video supposed to be about? I got distracted. Bounce Bros refers to a special attack that can be performed by the Mario Bros in Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, the Flash version using a sound effect from that series. Tall Guy is more of a trope than a specific reference, but I bring it up still because it's one of those few key times where Henry speaks. Hey, buddy. After selecting Synchronized Takedown, we have the option of Judo Throw, which I had hoped was a play on Austin Powers incorrectly using non-judo techniques like Judo Chop, but it turns out this is a legit move. Ellie performs a Tomonage, or Rolling Throw, which is actually a takedown. 
not a boosting motion, so no wonder it fails. The lack of any prior teamwork is also a good reason. While there was never a Gravitor 1.0, we can assume that the Gravitor 2.0 is a second version of the gravity bubble device used by Charles during infiltrating the airship. They're just visually quite similar. It's unclear why the G, T, and R are capitalized. It doesn't seem to be short for anything, like the world's most forced acronym. I have no idea. It might just be like a trendy tech thing. Then having a wildly incorrect version of one of Newton's laws in the fail text is a small callback to airship as well when attempting to use the laser within your bubble. The Force is a direct reference to the Star Wars franchise, with Ellie opting for a very Darth Vader-like force choke. There are a lot of randos who then escape at the same time we're doing our titular fleeing. I'll cover them quickly now instead of in the bios at the end, stopping on any that have any specific references. The bio section is probably going to be super lengthy, so if I can simultaneously talk about this scene and the characters, it helps sprinkle things throughout and saves some effort of having to reconnect the bios to the scene covering them later on. I, I'm, I'm over explaining it, this just feels easier to me. First, the guard Horace Johnson's bio joke about his job only being interesting if the cell doors happen to open. Horace Johnson is a lot like Boris Johnson, but I see nothing else that really plays into that joke. Could just be coincidental. Running out of their cells, we have Mr. Cool. That's it, it's just his name. Wild Willie. While he looks a bit like Winston Davis, people commonly thought that this is where he ended up after joining the Top Hats. We instead now know that he thinks he's an 1800s prospector. It's a different character. There's a toilet wizard who practices fecromancy and wears a bath towel on his head. Gastro, his name, would be a play on the anatomical gastrointestinal tract. Yeah, just a, just a weird bit of toilet humor all around. Punkhauser is a member of a German biker gang, one that we have not seen any more of. Punkhauser would simply be German for punk house. Uba appears to be some sort of frozen caveman now thawed out. This is our first look at what these characters' feet look like. It's never come up before in the series, and honestly, it's kind of gross. I don't like it. And Angry Mike, being a notorious desert wanderer, leads me to believe this is a riff on Mad Max. The alliteration is sadly dropped. Maybe everything about him is meant to scream, discount Mad Max. I mean, his mask looks like a band-aid. In the next part of the scene, there's a few more people fleeing. We have Jack Stickeye, the loud Irishman. This is a fairly obvious reference to YouTuber Jacksepticeye, although there is potentially another one later on. We'll get to that soon enough. And finally, there's Gus Garno. Everything about their design and name is lifted straight from Episode 1's Gasgano during the pod race sequence. I like that this relatively lengthy cutscene both starts and ends with a Star Wars reference. Feels like it really brings it home. For the first time in the series, we get this cool combo option where we pick one thing for ourselves and one for Ellie to do. Combining the sniper and crossbow, Henry does a full-on 360 no-scope on Ellie, which then gives the option of an MLG replay. There is so much meme gamer stuff squeezed in here, as well as just kind of mocking the over-the-top editing style of MLG moments. We gotta have a dubstep track. We have crappy versions of Doritos and Mountain Dew, Fight Me Mate, I'll Wreck You, an Obey hat, with the other guy doing a thug life pose. This is Ace Apex, the raddest dude at the wall, just a total bro. Loads of air horns, some sort of layered repeated sound effect of some dude screaming, probably ripped straight from some other famous gaming video that I don't know, RIP and pepperoni, just goofy gamer stuff. Then at the end we have some quick Illuminati eyes, along with something that flirts with the first few notes of the X-Files theme seen in the Flash original. <laughs> This earns the achievement XX Noob Slayer XX, just further building on some MLG gaming tropes and other nonsense. There is a lot packed into that small little section. Choosing Sniper and Taser is successful, and after blowing everyone away, we get a quick cutscene. I love the joke that of these two guys just standing in a non-moving elevator, 
Neither one of them remembered to press the button. When we pass by, we attempt to subtly walk by the guards, with one of them paying us close mind. This is very similar to the suspicion meter used in the newer Hitman games. Blend in, when the guard has his doubts, the piano cue and the Xbox doubt in the corner all come from LA Noir. Oh yeah, we transferred from the eighth floor. From the cafeteria? Nice try, inmates. This is taken further in the bios, with his name being Colby Phelps instead of Cole Phelps like it was in the game. The description plays off the fact that Cole's reactions could sometimes be a tad more intense than you would expect when playing. You're maybe 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, tops. And you wear size 11s? I don't think so, Eli. The guy likes to fly off the handle over nothing. Great game, though. After Toss, there is just absolute chaos outside. There's just so much going on here, and almost no time to process any of it, so I'll cover those bios later. While Adrenaline seems like it would be a generic item, this one looks exactly like Adrenaline in Left 4 Dead 2. I looked through as many real-world designs as possible. While there's not much else building on that reference, I think that's enough to say this one is for sure. While kneeing is present in many fighting games, specifically the knee, is Captain Falcon's move in Smash Bros. It really took on a meme-like quality of its own. And hey, we know from other games that Puff is a bit of a Captain Falcon fan. Ellie and Gregory get tossed out of the screen with a burst Smash Bros style, but the you win, perfect, comes from Street Fighter. You win, perfect. Obviously re-recorded for the remake. You win, perfect. You win, perfect. The fail text then pokes fun at the fact that we're mixing and matching fighting game references. I don't know what the deal is with this little side-to-side -side spin before the knee? It didn't feel like Smash Bros, and I don't know Street Fighter well enough. Maybe someone else knows what that's about? I would love if it's from a completely unrelated third fighting game franchise. We can then make a face, which is a fairly random option and totally unexpected success. From here, let's first head to the truck. I'd like to do it in this order so I can point out something specific with the bios and help build it up to explain some larger reasoning of mine. Before I get to that, we have Misha Shashova, formerly of a group of crazed mercenaries. He is meant to be the Heavy from Team Fortress 2. Misha is even the Heavy's official canon name in that series. Then we have Peter Waylands, and while he phonetically shares a name with Guy Pierce's character in Prometheus, his bio explains how he tried to scare people to lower the land value so he could buy it for cheap, but was caught by what is presumably Scooby-Doo and Mystery Inc. And finally, why I wanted to go to the truck first, we have Mark Emu. Trust me, this is going somewhere. This is directly the YouTuber Markiplier, with the name instead playing off of more of a cutesy fan nickname that he uses, Marky Moo. The bio is then riffing on his try not to laugh challenges, while keeping it in mind that in this section of the game we have a direct YouTuber reference. Let's now run over to the opening in the fence. We are ushered through by this green-haired guy before falling off the edge of the cliff. Originally, before we had the bios to confirm, in the Flash version, people commonly thought this was Jacksepticeye. You know, back when he had green hair. It made sense. We have Mark over in the truck, Jack over by the fence. Now we know better. Although, the reference here with this character does appear to be twofold. His bio is Sean S.E. Lemon. There is a good chance that Sean is playing on Jack's real name, Sean McLaughlin, and the S.E. stands for Septiceye. But Lemming, following this guy, falling off a cliff, and then the cross guard like stopper character are all taken directly from the Lemmings franchise. Tying it all together, the green hair actually works for both Sean and Lemmings. So yeah, I guess Jacksepticeye kind of gets two references, one and a half maybe, but it's more Lemmings than anything else. This character is also barefoot, so we're getting our second almost immediately after the first. Fleeing the complex is going full on Tarantino on us. Our final option is the successful motorcycle. Through this, we earn the ending Convict Allies. And in the original Flash version, if you watch the entirety of any of these credit sequences, you will earn Credit to Team with the face of TF2's Heavy. Credit to Team is something that Heavy will yell in-game. It's taken on a meme quality of its own. 
if I can pull you guys away for just like 30 seconds. Like I said, this isn't a sponsored segment. I just want to take a brief moment to turn people's attention to the upcoming game Scrabdackle, an upcoming game of wizardry and adventure by Jake Friend. When I played the demo of this game, I immediately fell in love with it. I've been getting involved in some small ways behind the scenes, trying to help with marketing and promotion of this game. I think it's absolutely delightful. I'd love to help put it in front of more people. There's a link to scrabdackle.com in the description as well as a pinned comment. From there, you can check out the demo, watch my own Let's Play, and sign up for a mailing list which exists pretty well exclusively to promote an upcoming Kickstarter. So if you guys want to help me out and support an awesome looking game, please take two minutes, follow up with that, and sign up for the mailing list. We can get back to the regular video now. Hopping all the way back to that maintenance vent. We can choose to leave Ellie behind after she helps us. It cuts to Ellie with an alert of Ellie will remember that, which is taken directly from Telltale Games. Most famously, their Walking Dead series, but I think most of their games from that era include this mechanic. We also get to hear a bit more of these two guys' conversation. In the place, the gates are open. <laughs> and I'm like, look at how much I care. I really like Puff's attention to continuity in this sequence. We actually hear it starting slightly earlier, since we didn't waste none of that time helping Ellie. What a sucker. Again, he's talking about Hearthstone, this time specifically the card Lord of the Arena, who proclaims, The gates are open when summoned. At this point, we would have heard everything there is to hear from this conversation, so here that is stitched together. So at this point, he has only like 10 health left. In the place, the gates are open. <laughs> and I'm like, look at how much I care. <laughs> I don't care. I ended up buffing up my guys and doing like 70 damage. <laughs> That's funny. Oh yeah, last night, I kept facing the same deck. Command Melody, starting from the skill straight down to the baton itself, and the diamond based notes played are all straight from The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Interestingly, we had seen this baton before in the Stealing the Diamond remaster in that retro room. So I guess Henry must have swiped it at the same time he was stealing the diamond? The fail text jokes about playing an ocarina instead, like the ocarina of time. Pickpocket opens up a UI that comes straight from Skyrim. We can steal his Spear of Shocks, Fine Boots, which is pretty hilarious to see these goofy stick figure shoes in such great detail, Gold and Silver Ring, which comes straight from Skyrim, PDA, a personal digital assistant, which I totally don't understand. Even when this originally came out in 2015, no one on the planet was still using PDAs. Such a weird thing to include, I guess it's just meant to be junk? We have a receipt from Game Store, a riff on GameStop, in which he bought Duty Calls 12 which is obviously a parody of Call of Duty, some candies, and a spell tome for the fake skill, Gas. A blast of gas that does 5 points of lingering damage for 15 seconds. A 10 pound weight, which again might just be joking about carrying garbage in your inventory, but probably more so about maxing out your carry weight. And finally, Monstro's Tooth, which comes straight from the Binding of Isaac. Classic Isaac Binderson. The best bit is that he doesn't realize his spear is gone until Henry collapses. He must have maxed out his pickpocket to a hundred. With the whoopee cushion, we get the two guards fighting and are able to sneak past. We are presented with three options straight from classic video games. The long shot from Zelda, spring from Sonic, and power jump from Mario. Each one of them has changed sound effects to remain copyright friendly. The long shot, specifically an upgraded hook shot from the Ocarina of Time, goes a very long ways. It's literally a long shot. The long shot only hooks onto wood things. Luckily, you hit one. This is true of how you navigate using the long shot in the water temple of the original game. And the spring just has a quick and simple joke about how damn loud that spring actually is. After power jumping to safety, we peer down an elevator shaft looking for a way down from floor 17. Choosing Button, I don't know where this original elevator music was from, but I like the swap to La Gaza Ladra, or The Thieving Magpie by Rossini. Boys, lunch is on me. 
Brett and I agonized over what this song could be for so long. I was googling every ballet soundtrack and classical symphony I could think of. I was snapchatting clips to friends and sharing it on Twitter. I was so stuck. I eventually had to resort to reaching out to Puff. He actually did this elevator style arrangement himself, which is pretty cool. After floating down to safety, filling up the shaft and slowing our descent with the balloon, down in the bowels of the complex, as the map labels it, we are then left with this pit to cross. No, not that pit. If we then try to balance across the pipe, it collapses and we fall, with the fail text calling Henry a fatso? I mean, come on, the guy's only 110 pounds. The plunger boots are actually the claw clamor boots from Banjo-Tooie. The design is the same, but it's that little intro song that plays when putting them on that really drives it home. as that item comes with its own little theme song that starts in the same way. Why this particular fail gets the A-E-I-O-U fail is unclear. There's nothing that really connects that to banjo Tui in any way. But clicking it several times plays a text-to-speech robot that eventually devolves into utter gibberish. This itself is a reference to the fully unrelated game, Moon Base Alpha. There's a very popular video where the players just spend their time spamming the chat to break that game's text to speech. It's up there with one of my favorite videos on the internet. It's like three minutes long, you should absolutely watch it, and you'll start seeing it referenced in a lot of places. John Madden, John Madden, John Madden. Next, we do our best Jeffrey Plum impression. Or maybe it's supposed to be Wilhelm Craighouse? Could be either but I'm mostly, I'm mostly joking. I find it pretty funny that in these successive correct options, we first filled a balloon with our own regular air from our lungs before filling ourselves with helium. Seems like balloon and helium could have been used in tandem, no? Probably would have worked in the elevator shaft and across this pipe. I also love the deflating balloon sound that comes from Henry's lips. That's just great physical comedy. The box is obviously from Metal Gear Solid, which Snake would commonly duck under for cover. The little question mark that pops up is building on that reference. We have our Gadget Gabe entry for this game with the Shadozer. I guess it's probably supposed to be like Shadozer. Gadget Gabe is a recurring tech reviewer who is presumably named after Valve's Gabe Newell. His tips are usually super unreliable. So the fact that he gives this one a dicey review, I would be honest with you, this one isn't that great, should inform us that this one ought to be extra terrible. Yet he still gave it a seal of approval? Then we get salt in the wound with some fail text wordplay. Really milk in that pun. A remade whistling version of Shadow's theme from Final Fantasy VI plays while reading the review. During this scene, we can click on the moon behind the cloud for a quick shoop de whoop attempt. This is the first one in the series to be on a moon. Usually they're hidden in the sun, but the poor guy gets interrupted before he can do anything. He looks so sad. Our successful option is Mario's Tanuki Leaf, which is the second successful Mario-based option in this pathway. There is actually an achievement to be earned through this path, nailed it, for sticking the different landings. Henry falls flat on his face three separate times. If you click just before landing, when using the power jump, when climbing out of the vent after helium, and again when your tanuki powers end, you'll then land on your feet and earn the achievement. The boat name, the SS Annie, is likely a play on the SS Anne from the Pokemon series. Both when we take over the ship from the captain, and when the crewmate takes it back, we hear the first half second of vacillation. the jockey theme from Left 4 Dead 2. In the remastered version, this was swapped out for a musical sting also used in Inner Sloth's other game, Among Us. 
I would love to do a video where I look at the Among Us references to other games, including Henry Stickman. It's just very hard to do without everyone thinking you're acting super suspicious while you just go exploring the ship. We'll see what I come up with for that, but I would really like to do that video. There are no references in the rocket, but I'm a sucker for the gag of the rough engine startup, like this rocket is some kind of old beater car. <laughs> When selecting the dinghy, we race off and earn Ghost Inmate. As we're sailing away, the guards comment that we must be Smith, off to see his family. We can assume from the bios that they think we are Gordon Smith, who is often tired and sleeping on the job thanks to his newborn. I believe this is a continuation of a joke from infiltrating the airship. When using a disguise through the boardroom of that game, they think Henry is Smith, and he's told to take an escape pod to be with his wife, who is now in labor. If Gordon Smith is the very same Smith, it appears he gave up that life of crime with the Top Hats to instead find steady work out on the wall to support his family. He may be struggling, but that's really nice. Now here's something I'm seeing just going through the process of editing this. There's a personal digital assistant in this scene. What is it with these games? Why are these stick figures using this crazy outdated technology? I guess that makes its inclusion in this game a small callback. Back at our cell if we instead choose Charge Tackle. This initiates a quick time event as we run through the halls. If we choose nothing, we are shot down. This would have been the first game in the series during its original release to feature a quick time event countdown timer like this. So the fail text specifically mentions the new timer. Since this quality of life feature was added to all episodes of the remaster, it instead now only says notice that timer. I do prefer that the new timer counts down instead of up. Also, just from my perspective gathering footage, it's so nice to finally play a Flash version that has the map to navigate fails. That is again present now in all of the episodes, but it was something original to fleeing the complex. If we choose Sonic's speed shoes, we power up our run Sonic style and go crashing into the opposite wall. The remastered version has more of a fast car-like sound effect. The fail text, too fast for you, uses a common meme format of replacing two and four with numbers, like too spooky for me, or crappy Sonic drawings with this exact phrase. I think the whole trend began back making fun of too fast, too furious. I could be wrong about that part, but the fact that they used a generic car revving up sound rather than Sonic running could be leaning into that a little bit. Maybe it's a coincidence. Acrobatics has us chaining together a combo in the style of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series. Including the extra emphasis on a particularly well-executed move also comes from that game. Our front flip earns a elite amount of points, and the handstand is worth over 9,000. We then enter the next quick time. I love the self-referential humor, acknowledging the fact that all the rooms are simply decorated with an insane amount of boxes. If we again do nothing, we read, you know, I don't think this guy knows what he's saying. My guess is that Puff used Google Translate or something similar for those German lines. Not only is it fair to climb, but nine, wow and is poking fun at himself for not really knowing what he's saying. Web throw is an attempt at a full-on Spider-Man swing that doesn't work so hot with tied up hands. I just noticed this now, but in both versions it reads, can you even shot web? I'm sure that'll be corrected in a future update. Tool gun comes straight from Gary's mod, and while that wouldn't be an issue in that game, here it results in us being banned for cheating. This anti-cheating screen is based on VAC, the Valve anti-cheat system. Item is the randomized weapon blocks of the Mario Kart series. Selecting this is the correct path, and cycles through several references before settling on Boo from the larger Mario series, turning Henry invisible. It's also directly a Mario Kart item. At least he isn't invisible to himself this time. There's a green shell, lightning, red shell, and banana, all from Mario Kart, with a shoop de whoop hidden in there. Clicking on this causes this weird shoop melon to pop out. I'm guessing the spotted green pattern is supposed to look like Cell from Dragon Ball Z, where the shoop originated. In this cutscene, the guy who phones in making the common mistake of mixing up Stick Man and Stick Min. It looks like uh, Henry Stick Man? Stick Stick Min? Yeah, Henry Stick Min has escaped. We see that Dimitri has two degrees on his wall. I guess he had a little extra schooling in the five years since the Flash original. They are actually just copy and pastes of one another, both reading, 
University of Trotska, which I believe is fictional? Stuff and words. More things to say are written here. Dmitry Johannes Petrov. He got a diploma from a school so he can be a good warden because of this diploma, that is all. Out in the yard here, the isometric view, tile, grid, and arrow indicator for movement are all from Fire Emblem. I know Advanced Wars and some other tactical games have this too, but I think with the coloring and everything else, it more closely fits with Fire Emblem. If we choose the boxer Coco Kalinski, a parody of Soda Popinski from Punch-Out, get it? Coca-Cola, Soda Pop. We get knocked right out in a Punch-Out style battle. Coco's bio refers to getting knocked out by Little Mac in that series. I also love Will Speck's big oh moment when we faceplant. He's the type of guy who laughs at a funeral. No wait, sorry. He's the type of guy who won't stop trash talking the other team when watching a sports game, even if they can't hear. Well, we heard this time, Will. We heard. If we run straight into the building, the lights are out and the Torador March starts to play as a set of eyes glow. There's a quick cut to a version of Freddy Fazbear standing in front of us. Nothing really scary about that. There is a quick fail fake out of, that wasn't scary before the world's lamest jump scare takes place. All of this is in reference to Five Nights at Freddy's, and we earn the achievement, Spooked. It's three spoopy five me, you guys. Choosing the tank was pretty well destined for failure. Everything about this scene is straight from Advanced Wars. And there's some classic fail screen wordplay. Gee, tanks a lot. And finally, Karlov Chernik initiates a Fire Emblem-like battle one that is very close to the style seen in the Game Boy Advanced games of the series, which by far had the coolest looking fights. I love how well Puff recreated the beefy, weighty feel of the attacks from those installments. We can see another guard in this sequence carrying another one of those spears of shock. Wolfing down a sandwich turns you into a big, rage-filled, beefy fighter like the behemoth's castle crashers. The fail text is making fun of clickbaity headlines on well, essentially any website at this point. Our costume is that of a snowman. The fact that one guard shouts about Frosty escaping before shooting us Frosty's escaping. might actually indicate that in this world, Frosty the snowman is not only real, but locked up at the wall. Or would it be Frosty the snowman? I like to think that the big, overemphasized chill is a reference to Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze All right, everyone. Chill. and his endless ice puns. Chill. Chill. If we choose the truck, we burst through the gate and begin an epic chase sequence. If we choose to do nothing, we are shot down with the text, not even close, baby. This is one of video game Donkey's signature catchphrases. If we choose bail, we eject with a big gliding parachute before being shot down. The fail text, you should have followed up with a tether from your wrist strapped grapple hook. What do you mean you don't have one of those? Layers into this all being a reference to the Just Cause series. After we slam, the truck rolls and crashes, leaving Dimitri to monologue to us while we plan our next move. If we grab hold of Kirby's Warp Star, we are shot through the air and come crashing into a cell. This place seems familiar. Not only did we end up back in our own cell from escaping the prison, we've mimicked the jetpack fail result from that episode. That's honestly the perfect callback joke in my mind. Mwah. That earns a chef kiss. When foolishly choosing to surrender, we're simply locked back up again, this time in maximum security. What an honor is a little generic, but it might be taken from a recurring joke with Futurama's Dr. Zoidberg. What an honor! Taking something seemingly negative and thinking that it's some great privilege. Finally, we can simply wait out the quick time event. The truck rolls off the edge with Henry barely clinging on. Everyone leaves and we earn the ending presumed dead. One of the quick scenes we're shown is a papers please reference with the two big stamps and the credentials on the table in front of Henry. If you click on the moon again, we get a sad and defeated Shoop who can't even muster a proper whoop. Poor guy. After clicking the third and final Shoop moon, we earn Brugno. Getting real tired of seeing this guy. I guess the Shoop just never really works properly when it's a moon instead of a sun. The final part of this sequence was changed slightly for continuity with completing the mission. Before, we saw a plane taking off, assuming Henry was on board. Instead, now, we see him wandering through the cold. I guess we still needed that passport scene to show him changing identities, even if he didn't fly away? I think it still makes sense. 
We're nearing the end of this massive episode. We have one more branch that leads to two different endings. Then we still have some more metals and bios to cover. Dang, these games are big. From our cell, we can wait for transfer. Here we have our fleeing the complex appearance of a Henry staple, the teleporter. Featured in every previous episode of the game, plus crossing the pit. So far, we've had only one success in stealing the diamond. This time, it teleports us to an alien planet, starting right from those initial sound effects. We are then surrounded by zealots, who are interrupted from calling out their iconic phrase, My life for ire, when they are mowed down by a Protoss Colossus. A random player, Bassin, taunts us, telling us to quit. GG, no re would be a common post-match phrase in StarCraft and other RTS games, telling someone good game, but that you don't want to play again. Maybe people say that in other games as well. I just grew up playing StarCraft and remember that being a thing. Our teleporter success count is now 1 for 6. When using Sonic Pulse, the fail text includes this little emoji that I believe is meant to be the Newgrounds anger face. It's come up so many times throughout the Stickman games, but is often a little more obvious. Considering it's a bit of a recurring joke, I would think that's probably for certain. In the fake illness fail, we get this transition sound effect in the Flash version, <coughs> taken directly from Ocarina of Time when Link either falls in a hole or lava or some other thing where he needs to respawn in the level without having fully died. This has then been swapped out in the remaster. <coughs> The Eat Me cookie comes from Alice in Wonderland. There are various food items in that series labeled in similar ways, which cause Alice to either grow or shrink when she eats them. How Curious is a generic quote from that series as well, as Alice is constantly commenting on the curiousness of the things she encounters and sees. Laser Plane cuts a nice hole in the floor for us, and once we drop down below, we grab a phone to call either the Top Ats or the government. We also crush the heck out of this poor sap. There's actually no bio for this absently crushed guard. I really want to know what their deal was. Seems like such a meaningless death. This branching point in the map is referred to as Phone a Friend, which itself is a reference to the very same option given in the game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? This phone call builds off of two possible branches from infiltrating the airship, where we either joined up with the government in government-supported private investigator, or became the leader of the Top Ats in rapidly promoted executive. This is the first real moment of firm continuity in the series, where something in one episode directly builds off the events of a singular previous path from the prior episode. This sort of setup becomes critically important to completing the mission. First, choosing the aid of the Top Ats. When calling, Reginald Copperbottom's ringtone is called Top Hat for Life. This is actually a chiptune remix of Gangsta for Life, which is the ending theme of the badass bust out route from escaping the prison. Yes, hello. Neurotoxins would typically affect the nervous system, hence the name, and the brain is technically a part of neurology, so having everyone turn into shambling zombies kind of makes sense, sort of? Why not? I suppose undead is better than being fully dead. The drill pod comes crashing through a window in a way that feels very similar to our cannon entrance from infiltrating the airship, but that's more of a visual similarity than a reference. We have our presumably Austrian top app member, Arnold Schwartz, a clear parody of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwartz is just shortened, but I love the way that his name is Arnold instead of Arnold to sound more like the way Arnold would say his own name. Between that, the tooth gap, the accent, and the flipping of one of his most famous catchphrases, Get to the chopper! Get to the airship! The overall comparison's pretty on the nose, pretty inarguable. Slingshot itself doesn't include any references, but there is a medal stashed in the fail screen, one that intentionally messes with you as much as possible. Rather than myself navigating this whole thing all over again, experimenting with the different branches, I'm just gonna recycle footage from my own let's play of fleeing the complex. This seems like a good place to keep a medal. Click here for a medal. Well, I mean, you gotta work for it. Hmm, that still seems too easy. Nah, I'm up here now. Ugh, now I'm down here. Ugh, how did this happen? Whoa, this seems like a good spot. Sure, how's it going? 
Enjoying the game so far? Well, yes, I'm right at the end of it, and I did enjoy it all the way through. Ah, I'm glad. No problem. So, what should we talk about? I bet you don't know the capital of Mongolia off the top of your head. I bet you're just pressing OK without even reading what I'm saying. It's important. Don't skip my words. Uh, dogs have feet. Press the sun in the sneaky ending. <laughs> as a side note, giving this as a hint is a bit of a running joke in the series. During the good ball sequence of stealing the diamond, when there's a bunch of error pop-ups, we were also told the same thing. What? 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 Alright, I got tired of that spot. This seems nicer? Which one is correct? That! Ah, oh, you guessed right. I have a confession, though. They were both correct. Will you press the rightmost button? Hmm. <laughs> this is uh, some circular logic that I can't possibly win. You liar! So's, don't press this button. Oh. <laughs> this! You guessed right. They're both correct. This time I'll say, yes, you liar. I guess it's, I guess I'm a liar either way. Yes, it wouldn't have mattered. Don't press this button. Press this one. There we go. This button will take you back to the beginning. Retry, retry is better than the menu. Fooled ya. Oh, nice one. But now you have to press the retry button to continue. Hmm? Guess I can't fool you, huh? All right, all right, take your medal. Oop. Come on, don't you want it? Try to corner it. That's the ticket. Easy, easy, almost there. Careful, that's it. You did it. Claim your prize. Easy achievement. It's, it's nice and easy. <laughs> there, that's just much simpler for me. The magnet fail text acknowledges that the writer has no idea why that fail took place. They are fully admitting they've BS'd us a few times. I mean, we know that from the bunk Newton's laws, but it's good to hear them actually admit it. Nobody likes a liar or a know-it-all. Sick Ride has us making a daring jump from the complex to the airship with a magnificent return of Henry's stealing the diamond scooter. Reginald initially catches and saves us, only to let go and drop us into the waters below. This earns the ending, The Betrayed. Something that was left completely ambiguous until completing the mission. Going back to that room after the laser plane, we can instead call for government help. Matching up with our main man Charles, who's apparently just ditching a mission that he's in the middle of. As we try to sneak through the cafeteria, we are totally busted. Thanks for the help, Wallace. Worst undercover agent ever. Although, really, this is adhering to the in-game continuity. Wallace's role is to bust out members of the Top Hat gang being held at the wall. In this particular path, we're carrying on from us working with the government. We are not a Top Hat, so he'd have no reason to stand up and help us. Pretty clever there, Puff. This little doodad that we stick in the ground creates a bubble shield, which is directly the Z4190 bubble shield from the Halo franchise. After being unable to move, the fail text includes a cartoonified version of the Kappa Twitch emote. I like how it doesn't even look like other Henry characters, without the rounded head or iconic long eyes. Does that mean there's people somewhere in this world that do look like real humans? Or maybe it's kind of a reversal of logic. In the real world, we like to make emojis that are little round circle symbols happy face heads, and in the Henry Stickman world, their emojis are overly detailed and look more like real world people. Whether or not that was the intent, that is now my headcanon, because it's just too funny. Earthbend comes straight from the Earthbenders of the Avatar series. Who knew both Henry and some of the others of this world were benders? After we get nailed by a rock, we get a flash, shaky cam, and wasted, all from Grand Theft Auto. When I first read, you were doing so well. It reminded me of when Bender meets God in Futurama. I was going to leave it out as it felt coincidental, until I realized God is saying that to Bender. You know, I was God once. Yes, I saw. You were doing well until everyone died. And we get that fail text during a sequence where Henry is a Bender. So maybe that was intentional after all? Oh, I really hope so. Flash is an ability straight out of League of Legends with the icon and animations being pulled from that game. The ability allows you to teleport a short distance, and appears to be far more reliable than the actual teleporter. Outside the wall, Charles now offers to help. If we directly choose Charles, we get to see him put the greatest plan into action. This is the greatest plan. 
I love that his little icon shoots us a confident double thumbs up this time. I also like the continuity of flying straight into the wall always being a fail. This plan is just some itch Charles has to scratch, and we never would have made it to this point if we followed the path of that fail in infiltrating the airship. So while we've seen this before, this would be his actual first time attempting it. He just can't resist. And the fail text acknowledges that yes, we the player have seen it before. When choosing Snipe, Charles instead takes out Henry. Friendly Fire On would be a reference to pretty well any FPS game that allows you to shoot your own teammates in a multiplayer mode, typically listed in the settings as Friendly Fire. I don't think it's any more specific than that. The mini helicopter will successfully yank this guard off the wall and allows us to sneak up, only for the alarms to be raised as everyone sees Charles approaching. If we jump off the edge entirely, it's kind of playing off the common action hero trope of someone being caught in mid-air by an aerial partner after jumping off something tall. But we're simply dropped, poor communication, Report Charles, bad teammate, is again somewhat generic of an online multiplayer phrase, although I'm sure Henry shares some of the communication blame there too. Finally, by tackling Alex, we stop him from shooting down the helicopter while Charles lands on top of and crushes Kurdrew. We are able to fly away together, earning International Rescue Operative. Now we're left to cover every bio that I didn't squeeze into the actual fails and choices. I'll only include characters with direct references in their names or write-ups. Henry's bio itself refers back to the fact that he has escaped prison before, literally in escaping the prison. Dimitri's bio ties in directly to a quote from him while he has Henry pinned down. There has not been an incident here in 50 years, and the day you show up, this happens. Apparently, he's a super effective warden, but like, how old is this guy? He's pretty spry for an old-timer. Nikolai Dietram gets a special acknowledgement for his incredible form and mastery of the slab squat, which is a legitimate thing. Matthias Guardsmith, it's just funny to me that one of the only things he says is presuming that Henry is Smith as he escapes, and he's a guard named Guardsmith. Real creative on the naming there, Puff. Thormund Rylock relishes a challenge, which explains why he gets so darn excited before shooting Henry down when running through the halls. Frederick Spielen looks a lot like Dr. Robotnik. He's the German-speaking guy from before. And while Spielen is German for play, I think his name is supposed to be more of a twist on the old 80s toy, the Speak and Spell. You know, Speak and Spell, Spell and Speak, Spiel and Speak. Maybe that's a stretch? Harold Cooper got his job at the wall through Frederick. Cooper, or Cupper, is German for Joker. Carl Pinkerton is based on British comedian Carl Pilkington, known for his series An Idiot Abroad. This would be the bio portion about traveling the world, and his head looking like an orange is based on a running joke of people simply saying he looks like an orange. It's gotta suck to be kicked in the crotch by a guy named Stoneheel, who specifically has dense feet. Franz Ferd is kinda like the first part of Franz Ferdinand. They both have stashes, but this one doesn't quite have the Archduke's iconic duster. There's no reference in Jim Pinkson, I guess Jim is like jam. But he's a jelly boy, not a jam man. Jelly and jelly sandwiches. That's all this guy gets to be known for. In a place filled with Mirakovs, Krautzes, and Krakowskis, we have Kato Ito, the singularly Japanese-named character at the complex, who is the one other than Henry who seems to be able to bend. Apparently, he's kept it a secret until now. Ryan Halbird's father works on the wall, but we either don't meet them, or they have a different last name. Joe Joshin is the third character in the series to have a Jojo name. Just Joshin ya! There's only one other one so far. The first was Joseph Joe in Stealing the Diamond. Joe Joshin is less exact than Joseph Joe, but it still works. Joey Walnut, eating enough food in the cafeteria for three people, is based on Joey Chestnut, who has been ranked first in the world of Major League Eating. There's a chance that Sal Mann is related to Gary Mann, but his name also just sounds like Salmon. Or more accurately, your dad's goofy friend who asks you to pass the knife so he can eat his Salmon. Now would be a good time to talk about Gary Mann. Help break up the flow of just reading a bunch of bios. He is generally a reference to Half-Life's G-Man, with his name being a very clever combination that pulls from G-Man, Gary's Mod, and Manco from Valve's other game, Team Fortress 2. With a quick letter swap, you also get Gray Man, also a character from TF2. 
So there's a lot going on with the name Gary Man. He also has his own achievement in game. Gary is hanging out in the background at five different points in the game. Clicking on him for all five earns you Rise and Shine, something G-Man says to Gordon Freeman in the opening of Half-Life 2. He is found amidst the chaos in the yard after Henry and Ellie are breaking out through the elevator, in the cafeteria during the earth bending sequence, again in the cafeteria when Henry calls the top bats asking for help, on the dock while soaring through the air with our tanuki leaf, and the short and probably toughest one, coming out of a building just after fighting Karlov in the Fire Emblem sequence. Now we can go back to some bios. Wilhelm Krieghaus returns from the airship, although in that bio it credited him for being great with technology. Now after totally botching the simple card swiper, he is considered someone who struggles with technology. SureShot Sherman gets his nickname for being accurate with his rifle. He and Wallace Pemberton have the distinction of being the only two Top Hat members that only appear in Fleeing the Complex. I've got to show some love for Thomas Chestershire, even if there's no reference, not just for the classiness of the two monocles, but because he was apparently one of the only ones who actually liked Henry's leadership. While The Boys is a relatively new cultural phenomenon with the success of the Amazon TV series, I know the comics have been around for longer, but I don't think they were popular enough for this to be a long-term intended reference. It's kind of just stitched onto this bio here. Melvin is compared to Huey from that series, the nerdy character who loves hanging out with The Boys TM. The reference really isn't taken any further than that. And for seemingly no reason, he has a strikingly similar name to the 30th President of the United States, Calvin Coolidge. Dan the Man, which is his second choice for a nickname, he wanted to go by Dan of Steel, which is a riff on Man of Steel. But there's more layers here than that. In JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, there are several characters named after musicians and bands, one of which is named after Steely Dan. When localizing the series, there were some copyright issues, and his name was swapped instead to Dan of Steel. So Dan the Man here is pretty late to the party. He had to take his second choice name, with his first choice being unavailable because of a JoJo character's second choice name. A lot of name changing here. Little Mikey, I love little Michael, is potentially named after the rapper, or Mike Wazowski's little doll, or purely a coincidence of a pretty generic name. It's hard to read into that one too much. Polis Petrovich won a sweepstakes and got to name a planet after himself. This would be the Polis planet in Inner Sloth's other game, Among Us. Kyle Baxter is our singular bit of CCC representation for this installment. The concept of having priority during Chaos Incidents is quite interesting. Are there other equivalent organizations to the Chaos Containment Center out there? We already know that the CCC themselves has multiple branches. The lore grows. Now, we can wrap this all up with the last of the medals not previously covered. There was a little bit of a Where's Waldo in the original, but he's been changed now to Waldorf. He doesn't even have a bio. He's totally secret. Similar to the Where's Waldo books he's based off of, you just have to find him amidst all the other people. Waldorf is hiding behind some rocks during the final choice screen in the Convict Allies route. And there's Roll Call for getting all of the bios. There were a few others that were cut from the Flash version. Patron of Tunes comes from clicking any of the music credits during the various endings. 101 Failmation, a reference to 101 Dalmatians, comes from earning 101 fails. The game only has 60 unique fails, so it would nearly require playing through the full game twice, or you could just farm that number through some of the easier to get fails. Find the shortest one and just pump that up an extra 51 times. Master of the Wall for earning every other achievement than clicking the text in the description. And with that, we have every bio, secret, achievement, easter egg, all of that in Fleeing the Complex. What an insanely large video. I, I knew what I was getting into. I have no complaints. Completing the mission is going to be such a huge undertaking. I'm definitely splitting it into at least two videos, possibly three, four, I'm not sure. It's really going to depend as I'm doing the research how quickly the references are adding up. I think it's going to be fun. It'll be the tiniest bit easier because I don't have to compare the Flash versions to some update, but it's still going to be a lot. And just one more time before I close this out entirely, if you guys didn't have a chance to do it earlier, please go check out the Scrabdackle website, sign up for the mailing list, and help support something I feel really passionately about. 
I don't plug this often, but there is actually a Discord server for this channel. There's a link in the description of every one of these videos. I figure I'd shine an extra little light on that, just give it a boost. And now and again when I get stuck on a particular reference, I either tweet it out or ask people on the Discord, so it could be a fun way to participate. Big thank you to patrons of the channel. My apologies to everyone with the delay in this video. I should have known it was going to be too big to turn around that quickly. Thank you all so much for watching. We're nearing the end, and I'll see you again soon.